Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We are delighted to have one of our de developers with us, Bryce Menadu. Bryce will be presenting on adding fields to page tables. It's a continuing series that he has on Hello Extensions. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And you can find our library under our resources tab on our website. And we encourage you to ask questions along the way. So please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. So now I'm going to turn it over to Bryce to kick off our presentation. Hello, uh, good morning to everyone, good afternoon. Thank you, Angie, for that introduction. Uh, like she said, my name is Bryce. I'm a developer consultant here at Novia Consulting. I've been a um, developer in BC for coming up on three years now, this spring. Um, a lot of extension work, a lot of AL work. Uh, there's some of my contact info on the screen. And today, we're going to be covering a few different things. So um how to add new fields to certain tables and pages so this would be any custom fields that you want to add um how to get them on a page and then how to get them on that table this would be also exposing standard fields um a couple examples like the number two field on an item the description two field on uh, the item uh, and also how to make fields always visible so if a field is on a page, but users can't see it, how we make that always available for them to see. Um, what we won't be covering today is specifically the designer and the personal uh, personalizing of a page. Uh, those will be covered somewhere else at a different time. Um, we will talk about them, but not go into deep about what they do and how they work specifically. So with that, I think we can get into a demo here. And how the demo is going to be structured, we'll kind of tell it like a story where we have certain case scenarios and how to fulfill each one of those case scenarios. Let me close up my slide deck here, and we're going to hop right into VS Code. Uh, so the first scenario of how to add custom fields or fields that aren't already in Business Central to certain tables and pages. A uh, very simple one we can start with is just um, extending or adding fields to the item table and the item page eventually. So looking at the screen, I have my extension prepared. I have my app JSON all filled out. I have all of my symbols downloaded, um, connected to a SAS sandbox for this demo, nothing on prem right now. And we're going to go ahead and add our first table extension. And this is how we're going to go ahead and extend on this table and get our new field to be available to add to a page later on. So I can go ahead and make my new file. This was just the item table extension.al. Add a, um, make sure I let it know it's a table extension. We're gonna give it an object ID, just like in the classic client. We're gonna give this an object name call this the INVCA item. Um, important to prefix your objects if and when Microsoft may add um, new objects. We don't want to have uh, object names conflicting in those updates when they may come around. Um, from left to right, I said this is a table extension object. I gave it the ID of 60,100, my object name, and it's going to extend upon the item table. Uh, first thing we can do, we can start by adding in our fields. So that was the word fields. Uh, IntelliSense will help out quite a bit in filling out some of these objects. So we have our fields brackets, and then we can go ahead and add our first field. Just like classic, we have to first give it um, an ID. We're going to give this one 60,100. And uh, let's say we're working in the food business today, and I need to know if my item is frozen or not. And we're just going to make that a Boolean. We want to give it a data classification of customer content. And we want to give it a caption of is frozen. 
Uh, from left to right, top down, we had to add the field keyword, we had to give this field an ID, we had to give this field a name, and we had to give this field a data type. Um, traditionally in the development environment in NAV, um, some of these properties were automatically filled in with AL and extensions. This has to be explicitly manually typed out most of it. Um, so we gave it the data classification customer content and we gave it a caption so that it uh, shows up with the space in the name um, when it's displayed anywhere. Uh, let's add another one just for demonstration's sake here. We can add another field and we'll give this one 60,101. And we'll say this is the uh, part length. Just to show off a couple different uh, data types and how they display on the page. So the first step of trying to get these new fields on the page is first we had to actually create the fields. Uh, so, so far we have achieved creating our table extension, adding our custom fields on them, on that table extension, but now we actually have to add it to the item uh, card itself. So we can do that, we can make a new object. Um, I use this little new button up here and we're gonna call this one the item card. And that'll be a page extension. Um, real similar pattern to the item uh, table extension. I'm gonna put this on the right side of the screen just so we can see the similarities here. It's going to be a page extension also with its own um, ID 60,100. And we're gonna call this the item INDC item card. It will extend upon the item card. IntelliSense will help me out and fill that in. Um, what is different about um, extensions versus the classic client? Classic client, you could add in your fields wherever you needed to insert them in between certain fields that already existed um, with extensions we have to tell it where we want to add that field to. Um, so start with our layout brackets here. Um, and then you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So we have our layout and then we want to um, say explicitly, I want to add this field to the last. Um, I want this to be the last thing of the item grouping. So if I hover over this, I can actually go and see this is the item group and I'm going to add whatever is in between these curly braces to the last of this grouping. Um, if a person ever needs to figure out some of these things, um, using the web clients will probably be your best bet to just identify certain areas. If I want it directly after the external document number, if I want it directly after the item category code, um, et cetera, um, alternatively, right from uh, Visual Studio Code, when I'm working in my extension, I can actually go ahead and go to the definition of the, the object I'm extending. So if I take my cursor and I click and put it right in somewhere that is the item card word, um, if you're on a keyboard, F12, otherwise right click and go to definition. So by going to the definition of the item card, I can actually see the entire item card um with all of its uh fields and what they're called and where they're located um i can see here i have a group that's called item and here's all of my what would be my item based fields my number description block type um this is how i can understand it now this is where i want to put my new field um a couple of different ways to figure out some of these things some of it will be easier to find than others um, but between using the client or using uh, the definition that is the object itself, you should be able to figure out where we want to put some of these fields. Uh, one more time, that was you click uh, somewhere in this item card, you can use F12 on the keyboard, or we can right click and go to definition. And now we can see the item card and that works for um, all base objects. So your item card, customer card, item table, um, et cetera. So we can continue on. We're gonna actually add these new fields um, to the item card. And this is going to be a page field and we're gonna call it is frozen uh, with the source of rec.isfrozen. 
Um, we can give it an application area of all. This is so that everybody can see it. It's not limited to um, certain, certain application areas. Uh, and we can even give it a tool tip to indicate, um, indicate whether the item is frozen or not. Uh, some of these things will be there in the classic client, but with uh, AL and extensions, we have to explicitly add them in there. Um, Tooltip is not required, just recommended uh, per Microsoft. But and now at this point, um, we added in our is frozen field with the source expression of a rec that is frozen. Rec is being the item that's around the item card. Um, we can add our next field, which is going to be the part length. That was a rec part length. Give it an application area of all. Give it a tool tip of um, specifies the part length. Awesome. So, so far what we've done, we've extended on the item table to add our new custom fields. And we've also extended upon the item card to add those new custom fields on it. Uh, great. So let's test this out and see if we can uh, get this to show up. So I'm going to use F5 on my keyboard. F5 is going to compile the application um, and deploy it up to my sandbox. It may take a moment just to authenticate and actually launch the sandbox here. Everything should be logged in. We'll give it just a couple moments before the browser automatically opens up for me. And it looks like it just installed. And here is my browser opening. I just have to quick sign in. And Business Central is loading. And I'm taken to the customer list, it looks like. We can just go and renavigate using the search bar. We can go find my items. Takes a second to pull in all the demo items. Uh, now we're at my items list. Uh, note, I only added these custom fields to the item card. It would have to be another page extension if I wanted them on the item list as well. So we can go ahead and click into my Athens desk here, and we should be able to see my two new fields. We can see my is um, within my item grouping here, all of these fields here, my number description block at the very end, because I told it to add last. Uh, here's my new is frozen Boolean, either this item is or is not frozen with my tool tip if I hover over it. Um, and then my part length is as a decimal, it's defaulted to zero. We'll say this is 100, 1000 long. Um, I don't know what that scale is, inches, feet, uh, yards, but it is 1000 long now. Um, and this all stays here. It's all in the item table, accessible from the item card. So this scenario was just to fulfill if we had custom data um, against a standard page, um, extending the item table, then to extend the item card. Kind of the, the next uh, scenario would be to expose a standard field or stock field um, that I cannot add through personalization. So Real scenario, your users are asking, oh, I want to be able to see this field. They want to utilize this field um, into the user's perspective from the item card. And I go to personalize. And I want to add this field. And they come back and say, oh, well, my, my number two or my description two field isn't available in my personalization. OK, well, now we can write some code to actually um, fulfill the request of adding these fields to this page um, because they're not here under, under personalization. We'll use that number two and description two field as an example. So from here, I can acknowledge these aren't in the personalization. I can close personalization and we'll go right back into the code. Let me, uh, stop the debugger first. Um, and what I can do is I can reuse and keep using the single item card page extension that I started with. So let's say the users, they want um, my number two and my description two immediately above my is frozen. Uh, we can go ahead and just add 
a new field and we'll call it number two with a rec uh, dot number two. And now this is pulling, there's no custom field here. This just is the items number two field, but I'm adding it um, to the item card page where Microsoft did not. We can go ahead and add my tooltip there. Um, so no new field. We didn't have to add anything else to the table extension because the field already exists on the table. We just had to expose it um, on the item card. When a field isn't under personalizations, um, that tells me that when I actually go look to the item card, the um, Microsoft out of the box page, that I will not be able to find this field used anywhere. We can see my number is used here, but if I do a search and try to look for the number two field on that item card, it is not available there. So I have to explicitly add it. Um, not to be confused with uh, certain fields that are on the page, but just made invisible. An example of that would be um, like the trans order receipt quantity. This field is available via personalization, as we saw earlier, but it's set to visible equals false. And we'll cover that scenario um, after the item card here. But back to adding the number two in the description um, field to the item card. It'll all be the same application area all, and we'll give it a tool tip. Um, and there we go. So at this point in code, we've added the number two in the description two fields against the item card. Uh, we can go ahead and test our work. F5 again, and this will recompile, uh, deploy our extension up to that sandbox environment. May take just a moment to get that up there. And reminder that this uh, specific example is of where a field is not available via personalization and you want to expose it on that uh, page for the users to see. We just use the item and the number two and description two as an example, but um, we see a lot of uh, this scenario across a lot of different pages. Give Business Central a second to load here. Taking a sweet time today. Must be because of the weather. Live demos are my favorite. One more second. Check those in the other tabs and see if those will help speed this up. Just a glance here and yeah, nothing went wrong. Looks like it installed. Just taking its time. Uh, if this doesn't load, we can just go ahead and launch a different instance of it instead. It looks like both are taking their time. Okay, the one instance showed up, so we'll go glance back at that item card. Uh, there was a search bar item to get me to my items, my list of items. And then we'll have to pick an item. We'll go look at our Athens desk one more time. 
there's our Athens desk. Um, and again, if we wanted that those fields to be on the list page as well, that would be an entirely new page extension. Um, but since we add them to the item card and we added them directly above our new custom fields, um, there is my number two field and there is my description too. So instead of 1896, we'll give it 1796 for item two. Description two, um, yes, this is a desk. And we'll say it's frozen and we'll give it that length of uh, the 1000. So at this point, we've covered adding our custom fields to the page and table. Um, we've added standard fields to the page that weren't previously there. Uh, the third scenario to kind of talk about and cover is uh, what about fields that I can add through personalization, but I don't want to make my users go through and um, have all 100 of them, 200 plus people have to personalize that page. Um, we can fix that. We can achieve that through code. So an example we'll show here is if I go to my customers and I go look at, uh, let's go look at customer 10,000 and um, users come to me and they say, oops, excuse me, misclicked there. Um, and they've already exhausted their efforts. They've gone in here and they said, okay, I want to personalize. I want to add my field and I want to add my, my name to field uh, directly below my name field. Um, rather than having all your users actually go through this personalization process, um, we can actually set this to be there globally for everybody all the time. Um, so to do that, we'll close our personalizations. Um, we can go back to our code, stop the debugger for the moment. Um, this will require a new object, and that's going to be against the customer card. So we'll keep our prefixes, customer card dot page extension dot al. Um, and this will look pretty similar to the item card. I'll put it here so we can see the how different it is. Page extension, um, this will be its own ID. Give it the name with our prefix, customer card, and it's going to extend on the customer card. Give it the curly braces. Um, and then just like our item card, we have to explicitly tell it where we want to add these fields into. So I'll start with my layout brackets, and I want to add directly after the name. Actually, actually, let's go triple check that. Yeah, so there's my name. We want to add the name to directly below the name. So we can say add after. Um, oh, excuse me. This is actually not correct. We're not actually adding the new field to the page. We are actually just going to be modifying the field and changing its visibility. Um, what that means is since we were able to see this field in the personalizations, uh, that tells me um, from the development side that uh, the field actually exists on the page, but it's just not visible. Kind of the previous example, we looked at the item with those transfer order quantities, the field is there, but it's not um, visible, meaning the visible property is set to false. Um, users can change those personalizations, but we don't want to make every user do it. Um, so all we need to do is um, literally in English, just modify the name to field and set it's visible to equal true. Uh, we can confirm that it's defaulted to false if I go into the definition again, reminder that was F12 or right click, go to definition. And if I just do a control F and look for my uh, name to, we can see the name to field being used here on the page, but it's visible as set to false. Um, my modify on my page extension will override that. And we can go ahead and check our work. Uh, we can try to deploy and see if this loads this time. It should. It looks like I got to sign in. Uh, that's no problem. We can get that here. That is me. The, the caching and the saving of credentials is a little silly. So we have logged in now. 
um, or authenticated as me, able to continue. And we'll see if this can deploy. And we can see that um, after this is installed at the name to field, it will uh, explicitly just always be visible for any one where this extension is installed in that environment. Okay, it says it was installed. Wait for the browser to pop up here. Just waiting for that to load. Trying to clean up some of my other tabs. Um, well, that's waiting. It's taking its time again, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up another instance of it. And we can go look at the customer card. Great, so we're loaded in. Let the search bar load. We can go look at our customers. We'll go look at 10,000 again. And the expectation is that um, well, it looks like the other one loaded from the debugger. We can close that because this one's working. Um, there is my name to field without me having to touch designer or personalization. Um, it's now just on the page. So anybody should be able to see that, um, that there now. I mean, didn't have to go through the list of all the users to have them make the personalization and no fear of losing it because the extension is just installed globally uh, for this environment. And I believe that wraps up all the three different scenarios. Um, just a quick recap, kind of going backwards. This was a field that was on the page, but not visible. We modified it to be visible, the name to on the customer card. We go look at the item. We showed an example here where there were fields that exist on the table, but they had never existed on the page. Um, we couldn't even personalize or design them, being the number two in the description two, um, if those are of use. And then the third example was we had completely custom fields. We had to extend upon the table and then extend upon the page to get the is frozen in the part length field here. Um, those are the big three examples we could think of um, that you got to see today. I believe that's going to wrap up the demo portion of the, this. And I think it's time for any questions now. All right. Thank you, Bryce. No questions have come through yet. If anybody has any, please feel free to type them in and we can get those addressed with Bryce. All right, well, I don't see anything coming through, so I believe you covered everything. If anybody has any other questions that you can think of, you know, after the fact, please feel free to reach out to us or your account manager, and we would be happy to address those questions with you and your team. All right, well, thank you, Bryce, for the presentation. and. For anybody on our webinar today, or if you're watching on demand, we thank you for taking the time out to join us. And I just wanna let you know to check out our website for more of our upcoming events, and that's anovia.com slash events. We also have our training workshop page at anovia.com slash workshops. We have a variety of workshops to fit your role, so check out the ones that are right for you and your team. And have you heard our latest Innovia Conversation podcast? We have a library of podcast episodes for you to listen to, and you can learn more on our podcast page, and that's innovia.com slash podcast. So browse through our selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air. 
And don't forget about our conference page, innovia.com slash conferences. Our customer conference is coming up on May 4th and 5th at the University of Notre Dame. This is a free event for you to attend. Make sure you read up on all the details and register today so you can come meet the Innovia team, our ISVs, and clients. All right, well, we thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon on another Innovia webinar. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Bryce.